day 14, I'm two weeks in. Everything's still going swimmingly. Treat myself this morning. It's a bacon roll. The only problem I'm having is uh, with power. No problem on my ledge battery, 120 amp hour ledge battery topped up by all the driving. However, this, uh, this is my solar panel. Okay, it's just not getting enough light. Okay, it's behind glass on the inside of the window, so that will reduce the amount it can accept anyway. And that comes down to my power bank, which is in here. Okay, my all powers power bank, which I use to charge up my phone power bank, phone, laptop, etc. But it's this, this is the problem. It's been overcast pretty much all the time I've been away. Not good. So luckily I'm not trying to run the fridge off that. There we go, that's spot on. So put it in to warm it up, make that bread more cooked and more juicy and I'm gonna eat it now. Well, I've just pulled up outside Eden Camp, which used to be a prisoner of war camp during the war. I last came here in 1994. So What's that, 25 years ago? I have a 25 year old photograph at home of me standing in this guard box holding that wooden rifle. We'll have a look at that in a minute. I also have a picture of me by this old Spitfire. How cool is that? I stood here 25 years ago. How cool is that? And I stood here 25 years ago as well. That's even cooler. Well, I've just had a marvellous chat with an attendant here called Jude. Absolutely lovely. And uh, she's let me just film here at the entrance briefly. So this is a 3.7 inch anti-aircraft gun as used by my grandfather. All around the country in these gun sites that we're talking about. So this is on a mobile platform. You could obviously put down the legs to brace it for firing quite a big thing. I'd actually like one of these. There was some up for sale the other month. They didn't go for as much money as you'd have thought, but imagine having four of these to set up in a battery. That's amazing. So I really wasn't expecting to be able to see these today or to get into the camp. Literally only came to look at the, at the sentry box. So these were crew manned weapons and uh, were our equivalent to the German 88s. Every time I get near or to one of the gun sites, and in this case one of the guns, I see a bee. And my grandfather was a beekeeper. I reckon that's pretty good going. I'm absolutely loving this. So you'd sit there, crank the handles to turn the gun. This is his whole career. Load the shells into here. <laughs> Noisy old stuff. Well, this is a result. The solar panel is angled straight into the sun. Well, for the first time in nearly 40 years, I'm at the National Railway Museum in York. I first came here when I was in the Cubs. LMS, built 1926 at Horwich. Look at it. That beautiful LMS crimson. Going so well with the black and the gold stripe. These are royal coaches, and you can see inside, look there, the royal bedroom and a royal bed. I wonder, did the king shag somebody in there? Did he conceive a future member of the royal family? All that must have been great.
Got a male coach here. So this is the reality, not the uh, little flying out bits on the side of my Hornby trains, able to catch and drop off the post. Absolutely cracking that, quite pleased to see that. Then looking inside the mail office, you've got all the sorting desks where the mail would be sorted on the move. Some golf clubs, could be that my dad was on that train going down to play at Galston on Sea where he used to play golf. Oh, this is cool. Mechanical horse. I've got some of these on my uh, layout. I thought they were a bit small, but actually, now that I see the real one, I see that they were never that massive anyway. LMS Guardsman, I've got models of those on my railway. If I'm not mistaken, I also have a United Dairies milk tanker. <laughs> How smart is that? This, I believe, is a horse box. What my great-grandfather went to war in. If I remember right, it was eight horses or 40 men. And here we have the original, Stevenson's Rocket. Look at that. Here's one for some of my uh, YouTube followers. This is Terence Cuneo's largest ever canvas that he painted. And uh, it's Waterloo Station, which I was very familiar with back in the 90s, between 1994 and 1997. So we're just going to go and have a look in closer. I remember the WH Smith there, whether it's the same one, I don't know. There we go. I remember the platforms, and I remember dashing for trains. I don't remember you being allowed to have vehicles on, or is that outside? Yeah, on the platforms, I guess. Johnny Walker Red Label. Look at that. Lovely old uh, roof. Used to have the arrivals and departure boards. Now the question, of course, is where is the mouse? His trademark signature of a mouse. Can we find it? Zoom in on the cars there. No. Is it here? I've got these people smoking on the concourse. My guy used to. There's a beetle up the top there. Oh, oh, what's this here? Right on the top corner. There's his mouse. Cuneo's lucky signature mouse. Marvellous model railway. This would be O gauge, I guess. Station buildings. Oh, yeah. oh, train there. Oh, here comes what? poking out here's the evening star which is uh, a model I might buy at some point massive very difficult to uh, get any idea of what it looks like properly because of course it's very tight in here in this bit this is built in 1960 at Swindon beautiful locomotive deserves more room certainly what a beautiful locomotive that actually is. I think I might have to treat myself, maybe at Christmas time. Closing in on the Evening Star, the main wheels here are throat height. So there we go. Some idea of size. Pretty impressive, huh? This is cool, so the Atlantic Coast Express has been sectioned so you can see how it all works. I mean, this is, this is really inspired. 
look at that. I have no idea. This is a copper knob. That's why it's called a copper knob. Now see those holes? That's shrapnel from a bombing raid in 1941. So in the city 125, I remember these travelling on them. There's something in homage to my great grandfather. He too was an old contemptible. Having fought at the very start of the First World War, he's proud to be an old contemptible. One of the contemptible little army, according to the Germans. Very poignant visit this. It's an ambulance train from the First World War. Same kind of carriage as my great-grandfather would have been on, on evacuation from France, having been wounded. This is the inside of an ambulance train. In the First World War, my great grandfather would have travelled back from France in one of these to the SS Carisbrook Castle, which sailed back to England and took him to hospital in Exeter. This is an excerpt from the diary of Albert Parker Darknell. You can see that on March 14th, 1915, they unloaded. 502 wounded onto Oxfordshire and 450 wounded onto the Carisbrook Castle. GWR offering, Great Western Railways. This is the load start. Golden brown texture like sun. First 2000 horsepower diesel London to Norwich. All well and good, but we just tracked round here. We got a mallard. There in all its teal blue glory is a mallard. Such a famous locomotive. Beautiful 462. On the 3rd of July 1938, this locomotive attained a world speed record for steam traction of 126 miles per hour. It's incredible. It's a hell of a speed. There's so much weight. This is inside the driver's compartment of a Coronation Class 462. LMS locomotive, Duchess of Hamilton. Glorious brass and copper inside. There's the firebox. This is Duchess of Hamilton, Coronation Class London Midland Scotland locomotive from 1938. It's still a walk down. Unfortunately, it's really tight, so I can't get the view that I want to. What a big and glorious beast this is. I've taken a walk over to the walls of York. I'm going to go in. I haven't been in York for 30 years. I remember it as being really attractive, really beautiful city. And just over there is the uh, War Memorial. As we come through the arch. So we're going to walk down the city walls now towards York Minster and have a look at that from outside. The wall drops down here and that's Lendl Bridge which I'll walk over rather than paddle. Well this is the famous York Minster Cathedral. This ancient street is known as the Shambles. The ancient street of the Butchers of York. It's mentioned in the Doomsday Book and takes its name from the word shamel, meaning the stools and benches on which the meat was displayed. 
Well, I wandered out of the shambles to go and get some cash because I thought, hmm, can't really pay for the card. Now look at this lovely building. A little bit bugged. We're heading back up the shambles. really nice. Some of the smells from some of the food are just amazing. What's this? The shop that must not be named. Ah, it's one for Abby. Little Harry Potter shop. God, I hate these things. I hate these last nights. Freaky, horrid things. Some good smells coming from here, so I'm going to go see what's around the back here. Different food places cooking outside by the smell of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this, there's everything. Oh, I've got some real choice here. Well, I'm not paying those prices for food. I'm as tight as a Yorkshireman who don't want to spend any money. So they can all go to hell. I'm not even that hungry, though, to be fair. Another lovely, beautiful old building on the corner of Shambles Market. So great to see that they haven't lost the character of the city, like so many others. But I do, uh, I do wonder whether it's just become a tourist trap. Well, I decided to forget about the shambles. I've come off there and I found something else. A Yorkshire curd tart. Never had one of these. But when in Yorkshire, do as the Yorkshiremen do. The uh, Yorkshire pudding or a Yorkshire curd tart. So, this is a Yorkshire curd tart. It's a mixture of curd cheese left over from the cheese making process. There's egg, there's currants, short crust pastry, and uh, hopefully it's gonna taste really good. So let's have a bite. I'm gonna make these. I'm gonna make these in the Ninja. It's really good. Lendl, just like my paddle, but better built. Well, that's it. I'm going to head out of uh, the centre of York now. Years ago, I stayed on this campsite in Gothland. 1994 it was. I'm not paying to stay anywhere today. I reckon this view will do me for tonight. I'm just outside Gothland on the North York Moors. Well, the sun's going down and the sheep are eating, so I will too. So I've got myself a glass of Corona and despite all the rubbish I've been eating lately, there's no excuse to have bad food when you're camping unless you choose to do so. So tonight it's tacos, look at that. So I've got the minced beef and the spices, crumbled feta because that's closest to the Mexican cheese that we had there. There's the lettuce, there's the salsa my own sweet pepper relish so guys and gals if you'll forgive me i'm gonna love you and leave you so it's good night from the north york moors <laughs>